Hi Joy, hi. Hi Kate. Hello everyone. Hi. hi. Okay, so um, welcome. First of all, uh, I hope you all are well and doing great. Jody just sent um, a request to participate, so let's go. She should be in, in a second. Hello. Here she is. Hello. Good Hi. Good to see you. Hi, Jody. I'm fine. And you? I'm very well, thank you. It's so good. good to be here. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you for accepting. It's our <laughs> great pleasure. So, I'm so. Talk about I am <laughs> Hi, Heather. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Hey. Um. Let's just chat a bit so sure. that oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone can join oh, us um, so online. Are you this excited? Is this is this your first live on Instagram? Definitely. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> nervous about it? <laughs> um, you know, always nervous about the unknown, but I think it's great. I think yeah. it's great. Right. That you it's so easy. We yeah. each had the other day and. At that point, I realized, oh, this is really too easy. This is going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. It will be informal, you know, and very Such friendly. <laughs> and I hope more questions come up uh, during our chat tonight. We've oh, okay. got a couple of questions. Yeah. So someone asking about how the COVID-19 thing impacted <clears throat> the Ayampath organization, but that was already on our uh, list of things to chat about. Yeah. So, we will be sure to cover more about Great. this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I think, uh, ready to start? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. Um, first of all, thank you. This is um, above all for our friends in Europe who may not know um, much about Iampeth. Um, so we would so love to hear more about the history of the association, how mm -hmm. uh, it started, how Amorine <coughs> and um, what the, the goal of the association is and everything that is related to, you know, the life of the association, how it, uh, it's run by the board and everyone involved. Um, so you, you start. Absolutely. Well, the interesting thing about Iampeth is when we first started, we didn't have an E in our name. It oh, was oh. A-M-P-T-H. Okay. And started by a Canadian couple named Fred and Eileen Richardson, and they were building a cabin on a lake or a cottage on a lake in Canada, Ontario, Canada, and had this idea that maybe they could start a gathering there mm -hmm. of other people who were interested in penmanship. So the following summer, 1950, they met for the first time with seven, count them, seven members. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another Canadian, so those two, another Canadian, uh, a general, some people from, two from Illinois and someone from Cuba. Okay. Mm, wow. And international in the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the years, they, well, their main interest was to find a way to restore penmanship in the schools. They were interested in the quality of penmanship, improving penmanship. So it was very much based on handwriting at the time. Good. And uh, they must have had an effect because by the early 50s, handwriting was being taught uh, quite commonly in schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they met the, in Canada for a few years, and then in 1954, they made a journey to Geneva, Ohio, which of course is where Platt Rogers Spencer lived and taught and is buried, and where the Spencerian saga meets every fall mm -hmm. there. So they went there, a little bit of a pilgrimage for that journey. And over the years, that conference was attended by names you recognize if you studied uh, penmanship at all, Blozer and Lupfer and Courtney, <clears throat> and 
amazing. And I, I know uh, you've got pictures on your website about that um, pilgrimage um, mm -hmm. in Geneva, yeah? Yes. So, yeah. The general uh -huh. standing by the tombstone of, of uh, Platt Roger Spencer, which many of us who've been there have done a rubbing of. So mm -hmm. Geneva, you'll have a chance to do that. Um, so which, okay. through about the early 80s, the conference alternated between the U.S. and Canada and starting around around about 1982, pretty much from then on, um, the presidents were from the U.S. and would choose to host in their own cities. In fact, often people step into the presidency because they would like to bring it to their town. Mm -hmm. uh, not always, but often that's what happens. Uh, so early on, some of the presidents were also named you would recognize, like Buczek and De Calibus and So, uh, Muffler, and uh, carried on that tradition and it grew. And right about the beginning of the 2000s, I think was, I wasn't around, but <laughs> the organization, I was around, but not with the organization. And there came this kind of crossroads because websites were coming on the scene and the digital world was becoming more important. And one of the things I love about Iampeth is that we consider very carefully, you know, we, we may move a little slowly, but we consider very carefully each step that we make. And that was a big one to, you know, do here we are preserving this tradition mm -hmm. of a very hand central uh, art and craft, art or craft, whatever you want to call it. And do we mm -hmm. really want to have a website that seemed, it wasn't as common then and it seemed kind of counterintuitive for the group. Yeah. Ultimately, I think we all had to come to the place of realizing as Dennis Brown says, there are two kinds of digital, these digits, but also the digital by which we're communicating now and by which so much is being exchanged now. Mm -hmm. So Joe Vitolo put up our first website in 2000, and we saw a little bit of growth there. Um, but still, it was a very small, intimate group. Um, mm -hmm. Heather Held tells me about her first conference in 2003, where there were 75 people. The, oh, wow. the binder was a folder with a couple of sheets in it and a map of the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Evening activities were mainly the master pendants sitting around and writing names for people. Mm -hmm. uh, people would line up to have their names written by all the different people. <clears throat> but it's always been that family-like environment and that up-close-and-personal kind of environment that I really have not seen anywhere else. I, mm -hmm. I really enjoy that, and I, I suspect your organization is mu very much that way, too, when, you, when you're together. Um, my first conference was in Phoenix in 2011, uh -huh. and I knew two of the instructors, uh, and nobody else getting there. I, I had a blog at the time and I knew some other bloggers and just that was one of the benefits of that digital connection was I walked in and knew who people were right mm -hmm. off the bat. By the time I left there, I knew I'd found my people. And I just um, took and took and took from the organization until it came time to start giving back, which is how I'm here Sorry. with you today. Sure. I'm just reaching out from my light because it was... Um, daylight before, but we are losing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. You see me okay? Is yeah, sure, are... sure. Okay, good. Good. Um, in 2013-14, the website was redone very much the way you see it now, mm -hmm. and that's the point where our membership just began to grow and grow and grow. And I remember that because it was the time when I I joined. Yeah, and I remember. Yeah, before. The titles in the homepage were made by uh, Skylar, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember that year when uh, he did the, the section titles, and yes. they were online finally, and it was amazing to see all come yeah. together and so nicely. Mm -hmm. It's really appealing. It's very yeah. beautiful. Yeah, he's a wonderful talent. So what drew you to join? Pardon me? What drew... what? drew you to join the organization? Well, um, <clears throat> the fact that um, you had so many resources and mm -hmm. it was all in the same place and that was amazing mm -hmm. uh, because at that time I was learning Pony Pen, it was the very start of my journey. 
So um, instead of going here and there and um, losing time, that was a perfect place for me to be. <laughs> and, uh, and also because um, I got connected to um, the Flourish Forum, uh, to, to Erica in the mm -hmm. Flourish Forum, and many people were talking about the conference um, of Ayampeth and um, explaining how fun it was and how much they could learn. And uh, there was an amazing group of, peop of young people and that looked like, you know, uh, heaven to me because uh, it was everything I was looking for and I had no access to. So I thought, okay, membership can be my my first step in, and let's mm -hmm. see what happens. And then everything right. developed very naturally. And yeah, I'm so happy about that. <laughs> yes, we're happy too. And now look, <clears throat> branched out as many of our members have. I mean, you know the calligraphy podcast, Kristen, Kristen and Ajab. Yeah, Ajab, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just a few years ago. Hey, Christelle things with that and, <laughs> well, <laughs> and, so okay oh. um sorry i interrupted you um okay. so in uh, when was it 2015 that the new website uh went online i mean 13 13 14 ish around yeah there. okay yeah. when heather held was president yeah yeah okay and oh, last year you had a great change as well because your newsletter came mm -hmm. uh to yeah. us to all members well, a couple of years ago, um, it started to become apparent that the majority of our members were people that would not probably ever be able to be able yeah, attend. to attend. Uh -huh. Certainly not regularly, like many mm -hmm. of us do. So I became really interested in what, how do we improve the value of a membership for people that are not going to come to the conference, which is at this point, I mean, Last year, I think we peaked at about 1,700 members. Wow. And we registered 350 for the Atlanta conference with a wait list of 100. And then COVID spoiled the party. But <laughs> <laughs> last year. That's amazing. But, you know, it's so interesting with Iantha. So much of what we offer is free to the public. I mean, um, we had 3,500 people on our website last week. Huh. And uh, the greatest interest was from U.S., India, the U.K., China, and Canada. So mm -hmm. we're really expanding our reach that way. Uh, we have about 5,000 people a month who access our lessons and our guide wow. sheets. Which wow. you can download. Yeah. We have about 2,000 a month who access our rare books, which is an incredible collection if you haven't looked at it. It's there. Oh, yeah, right. I have. <laughs> But encouraging people out there to have a look and browse the se the rare book section, it mm -hmm. is an amazing. At iampeth.com, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there are mm -hmm. last time added eighty five instructional videos and another ten interviews with luminaries of the. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly a place that you can go down a rabbit hole and really get lost in, in study. Absolutely. Absolutely. Organization. Then there's a whole artwork section that includes, I believe, all of the master penman certificates and some illuminated letters and some offhand flourishing by past masters and just all kinds of little treasures there. It's great. Mm -hmm. But if you do <laughs> join, you're, you're, it's, you're support and even if you, if you join and you don't come to the conference you're supporting all of that yeah the conference is self-sustaining so don't ever feel if you don't attend the conference don't ever feel that your dues are going toward the people who are attending because they're not that it, one of the, the goals is to break even on the conference so you're supporting and sustaining all of that and not to mention the archive where we're still acquiring new uh well old but new to us uh pieces from the golden age of penmanship and american penmanship as we Beautiful. call it and so you're supporting all of that um and it's not very expensive to join um the membership year goes from july 1st to june 30th so if you haven't renewed your dues months, you're, yeah. you have a few more days <laughs> And we don't prorate, so the sooner you join, after the better, that you'll get the more out of it. And so if you do join, of course, you get priority registration for the conference. 
you get four issues of our official journal, the Penman's Journal. Uh, it's available to members digitally. And also you can opt to have a hard copy mailed to you, which many people just like to hold it in their hands. That's great. Uh, we publish, as you mentioned, a newsletter, which has bulletin items and reminders and deadlines and um, some items, items of interest, like mm -hmm. we posted a uh, never before seen video and interview of William Lilly, the master mm -hmm. yeah. and Bob. And we posted a birthday tribute to Marion Galt, our treasurer who just celebrated her 100th birthday. And who, by the way, was supposed to be in Atlanta. Oh <laughs> she, my! She had agreed to come to Atlanta and is planning to come in 2022. So if you wow. missed her this year, there'll be another chance. Um, if you remember, you're mm -hmm. eligible to participate in our member survey, which is a very important mm -hmm. thing. That it tells us who we are, how old we are, whether we know from that that we're about half amateurs and half professionals on amateurs mm -hmm. or professionals or would-be professionals um, and that impacts how we move forward because we really want to be available to all of you know have something for all of those people mm -hmm. if you're a member you're eligible for our certification program as you know you're one of our certified uh, calligraphers uh -huh, yeah. and uh, also for the scholarships and grants which you also know something about <laughs> correct <Yeah. laughs> um, we we'll talk about this later mm -hmm. okay we'll talk about the certificate program later sure so because, because we we had a question about that oh, good. so i want to be yeah to be sure that yeah people get to know that process better absolutely yeah okay. well the last two things i wanted to say in membership you're then eligible to take part in our envelope exchange it's become a oh, very yeah. popular activity i know that that apbc is doing it also and uh stephen gorman has done a fabulous job this year we've had i think i'm thinking close to 300 participants um, wow and he organized it beautifully so that no one was mailing to someone in their own state and everyone was mailing to someone in another country um, he did a fantastic job so thank you Stephen, for that and then fine last but not least um, we have a logo design contest so oh yeah that was amazing you can participate in that and all of the entries are displayed at the conference um, anyone who enters will have their artwork displayed at the conference that year and it's been really exciting to see what comes in there so that's my pitch for membership and <laughs> yeah that's great yeah <clears throat> okay so um what was the the feedback from people i'm curious here um from being a, an association mainly centered around the conference uh, so in-person knowledge and meeting people etc mm -hmm. to going more online because you're reaching out to a huge audience there mm -hmm. um, what was the feedback from people if you can tell us we really appreciated it I think and it's still a work in progress I mean it's for so long Iampeth was the conference that's all it was and uh, it was wonderful. And it was a small group and a family reunion. And it still kind of feels that way, but it's gotten larger and we've branched out more. But I think that from the point of view of, of those of us who were involved in the board, we're seeing all these wonderful, this wonderful new energy come in. And <laughs> of course we're preserving our traditions, but we're also looking at all kinds of new ways of doing things. and. Mm -hmm. I just love being in touch. I hear back a lot from people who say, oh, we like to hear from you more often. And so we're trying. Great. Great. Yeah. Before moving on uh, to our next topic, I would spend a few more words about um, this year's conference, which had sadly had to be cancelled. And yeah. I would like you to tell people how much work and effort you all put into arranging things and do explain to people because we really don't know how much is put into into this um uh first atlanta had to be cancelled due to covid and the pandemic and everything mm -hmm. the craziness that is so one question that came in was um 
did you think of bringing to people virtually some of the of the lessons that were due in Atlanta um, so online um, as an online offer or yeah okay let me <laughs> let me great question <laughs> yes Have it you... is a great question um i've been asked about that several times and um <clears throat> one issue is that so far 95 percent of the faculty who have been invited back have committed to atlanta 2022 where we've rescheduled okay so we would have to be offering something different <laughs> than that um and you know it 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 was a practical consideration. The planning for a conference starts when you become second vice president. The first thing you do after you're sworn in as second vice president is go find a venue. Mm -hmm. And for me, that took about eight months um, because I was trying to bring it to my home turf of San Francisco uh, and ended up not being able to do that and cast a wider net and ended up with a wonderful venue in Atlanta. I was saying to someone the other day, I've been there once two years ago mm -hmm. and I planned this whole conference and now it's not happening. And I'm kind of wondering if I dreamed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, you know, we're an all volunteer organization and there's a certain amount of uh, sort of limited time. So there were three years of planning that went in and then it wasn't as if we just pulled the plug on the mm. conference. A lot of, research and handling and negotiating and that sort of thing uh, going on that took time. And then even after the cancellation, follow through and refunds, and mm. it was a ton of work that way. And so in the meantime, mm -hmm. while I was kind of mulling this idea of online, I thought, I'm not sure that's the thing at this stage that we would do that be do the best, especially in a short time frame like that. We want we would want to do it really well. And in the meantime, there was an explosion of online classes. I have myself yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've noticed, but I am so overlooked. Oh, sure. <laughs> I've taken <laughs> some and yeah. <laughs> and uh they're plentiful and even some of our faculty members. So what I decided was that um a better way might be to offer something for everybody during that week. We're still going to celebrate that week. And, you know, beyond the classes, the real value of Iampeth is a camaraderie and a ton happens during unstructured time. Just hanging out, a meal, or it, most of the night in the study room, some of our younger members are there. Mm. Um, conversations in the hallway. We have teachers taking each other's classes there. I mean, that's all really hard to replicate online. Yeah. And True. so what I decided was that I would uh, tap into our wonderful Instagram resource. And I, I want to give a shout out to Castro Montes. Many of you know Thank her. Thank you, Castro. Yeah. And she has done a fabulous job this year with at Iampeth uh, official on, on Instagram. And um, by the way, just hit 10,000 followers, which we're very proud of. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kestrel. And so she and I are working together um, on some things that will be happening on Instagram during the week of the conference. First of all, I'm very excited about this. Most of our teachers for 2020 have agreed to film, to video a studio tour of their own oh, studios. That's so amazing. So you will get to walk through Heather Held's studio <clears> with her. You know, starting walking across the backyard and into her studio and see where she makes her coffee and where she makes her magic there and creates all of her beautiful things. So that's one thing. Um, there will be some daily challenges. We're calling it hashtag Missing I Am with 2020. Oh. And so there'll be some <clears throat> daily challenges of posting. And, and this week... Even though I've said we're reaching out to our membership in general, this week is really about the conference that that Good. we're missing yeah. whether we, whether we had registered for it or not. So we will have some. Um, this is a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so we have suggestions to uh, post photos of prior conferences. Uh, 
of course, marked with the city in the year, uh, photos of workspaces, photos of a piece that you're proud of, um, lots of different prompts for you during that week, um, as well as a, a writing challenge. Okay. Uh, and our, we will, Iampeth will be sponsoring an episode of the Calligraphy Podcast. Wow. Which is an interview with someone whose name I can't tell you right now. Okay. But it's going to be very exciting, and it's someone who would have been at our conference. Okay. Uh, so there'll be an opportunity okay. there. Uh, and Kristen and Ajab will be announcing that fairly soon. I think they've been dropping some hints, but I'm going to leave that to them. Okay. And then last but not least, um, <laughs> we, as a nonprofit, are required to hold an annual meeting every year. That's part of our, our nonprofit uh, responsibility. So we will be having our annual meeting for all members in good standing online, open to anyone worldwide. Mm -hmm. I picked 7 a.m. time in my time zone so that it would be a better time zone for everyone. <laughs> And uh, I do have to say, it's a business meeting. So it's mm. not like instruction. It's not, you know, the most exciting thing. But it's a chance to meet the board. And uh, that'll be something. There'll be an invitation going out for members to register for that. Um, Good. Around the first of the month. And uh, also we'll be swearing in our new board at that, which is usually done sure. at closing night at the, at the banquet. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the conference, but we'll be doing it then. So, yeah. Yeah. Great, great, so, great, great things yeah. coming up. Wow. About that and the ideas are still flowing and and don't hesitate to contact me if somebody has another okay. great idea for that sure. week. <laughs> okay, we have a question coming in and this is technology. Let me show it to you. Uh, you should be able to see it. Um, can you please explain the envelope exchange program in detail? Well, this is an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, any member can sign up and you sign up by a certain date and mm -hmm. you give your mailing address and your email address. And as I mentioned, Stephen Gorman uh, compiles all of that and puts together a list of, I believe, eight. Uh, everybody has eight envelopes to send and then he says mm -hmm. he wouldn't mind one himself either. So that's his <laughs> problem running this flooded with envelopes <laughs> oh, and then there's a deadline i believe it was last friday that mm -hmm. was the deadline so that's why you've been seeing a whole lot online on our instagram and so forth of, do, do um, you have a, an hashtag for the envelope exchange that we can follow uh, maybe cursor knows okay yeah. Yeah. Um, hey kristen i hope that's correct <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so what happens is a whole lot of people get good mail days where they receive yeah. that is amazing on their group and there's some beautiful things going on out there so uh that's it shell there will be a chance uh next spring to join up mm -hmm. again and it will be in the newsletter so um yes i'm kestrel is telling me it's hashtag i am with envelope exchange that's great. thank you guys kestrel she keeps okay. it in mind <laughs> <laughs> hi christine Okay, so um, let's switch to uh, the certificate program. Yes. Um, you have now um, a very exciting letter, slow process mm -hmm. for getting the certification. Would you um, take us through um, the process, how it is uh, constructed, and how can people... Uh, apply for that? Sure. Well, first, I'd love to share a little bit of history about the oh, sure. program. Sure. It was created in 2001 and ran through 2015. And it was based on the traditions of the Zanarian College, um, where the candidate was required to create a certificate of a specific wording, incorporating all of his or her skills. And, and uh, the first group of, of Master Penman was chosen by William Lilly. I mentioned before. Subsequently, all of the candidates had to be approved by all of the other master penmen. So we ended up, I think there were a total of, a, I think, about 16 master penmen named, and six or eight of them you still see as regulars at our conferences. Um, 
The program was dissolved in 2015 and the committee went to work to restructure a program that was more transparent, had clearer qualifications. The judging was blind, which it had not been in the past. Everybody knew who was judging it. And it was an incremental program, step by step. So as a result, a much longer process, but a much a process that's much more open to anyone mm -hmm. who cares to try for it. So um, there, and there's also an option to do certificates in certain hands or areas, or to do several of them mm -hmm. and then go on for an actual master penman, which is not in place yet. So uh the in 2017 the program was launched that fall offering certificates of proficiency and certificates of excellence in spencerian and in grocer script our two main hands that we work with um, and the first certificates were issued in the spring of 2018. that fall we added business writing mm -hmm. and the following fall, just last fall, we added uh, foundational, our first broad hand, broad nib hand. Mm -hmm. And there will be a new uh, element added this year. Again, not ready to quite ready to be announced yet, but keep an eye open for that. You'll probably know by midsummer uh, what that one is about. Yeah. Yeah. So the program is still very much a work in progress. To date, we've had 55 applicants and 20 certificates awarded. Uh, 16 of proficiency and four of excellence in the various disciplines. And we're very, That's very great. proud of the program's going well and uh, a few glitches like people's entries getting lost. Oh, and, yeah. And happened to you. <laughs> so yeah. But, you know, we're figuring it out and I think it's fantastic. I think it's going to be um, a much more comprehensive and inclusive type of program and much many more ways to approach it so yeah um, one thing i would like to ask you this is a personal question um as well as public i mean um do you ever um have you ever had any mentorship uh scheme or do you offer mentorship from a yampa teacher or um, a yampa master penman to people who require it uh, who require it, who ask for it? Um, there is a, some of that that goes, we don't have an official program for that. Okay. And for the certificate program, people are expected to pursue their own instruction. Yeah, sure, way. sure. That was, yeah, I meant outside the certificate process. Oh, I <laughs> see, I see. If I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, improve the level of a hand, that I do regularly, or I want to start with a new hand. Um, I thought, yeah, um, I've, I've never asked this question. This is why I'm asking now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> taking the chance to have you here. So yeah. it's first hand answer. Well, there's nothing official in place. A lot of unofficial happens uh, at the conference okay. for okay. me. Um, but you know, the one thing that has stayed with the program mm -hmm. is that those who receive certificates tend to be very generous with their knowledge and um, that old spirit of IAMPA, as we call it, that so much is given away and offered just in the spirit of this passion we all Sharing, share. Sharing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I think that people are needing to find their own mentorship. Um, but you can certainly get a lot of ideas for that from what you see <laughs> on our website and on Instagram, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so um, tell us more about um, all the people involved in the in the organization because I know there's not only you, right? Mm -hmm. There is not yeah. any me, only me. Um, you know what they I, to paraphrase uh, John Wooden, the basketball coach. The main ingredient in a presidency is the rest of the team. <laughs> <laughs> And so we have our <clears throat> elected officers. Um, we became a nonprofit in 2010, and we have our elected officers, uh, all volunteer. They're working year round um, uh, and behind the scenes. And it's an incredible amount of dedication and support, and just plain hard work from a lot of those people. So our uh, 
our process is that when someone is named second vice president, as I mentioned, that person is essentially in line to become president, almost with some exceptions, but right now that's generally how it works. Mm -hmm. And that person will move on through first vice president and then eventually president and then immediate past president, which is also a voting position and in, involved in um, nominating new board members. We have a recording secretary, uh, like many organizations do, who takes the minutes and has to deliver those in a timely manner. We have a corresponding secretary, and a lot of that work is responding to inquiries that come in on the website and questions about the resources there, as well as other general correspondence. Um, and we have a treasurer and an assistant treasurer, uh, and who handle all of the, the payments and deposits and this year refunds and who present an annual report of our of the state of our finances. The uh, membership director, that's pretty obvious, uh, Pam Hazlett handles that beautifully. And our um, Penman's journal editor is also a, a board position, all volunteer. And there is uh, also an obligation there to be reporting on acquisition, new acquisitions of historical Mm -hmm. uh, documents uh, along with the value and the donor and where where it's being kept currently. Our webmaster works a lot maintaining everything. Debbie Zeiner is our webmaster and she works a lot maintaining everything behind the scenes and she is command central on registration day. She's I've seen pictures of her desk on registration day and she's got three three computers set up and is wow. monitoring everything and figuring out when a class has to close and all of that. So she's been an incredible resource there. <laughs> we have a couple of members at large who don't have specific responsibilities, but um, can be part of committees and so forth. And we have a number of our past presidents who are still quite active on the board and still do a lot of input for us there. Yeah. On top of that, we have appointed positions and committees and volunteers. So we have a historian. We have, uh, as I mentioned, the certificate committee, very busy committee, working very hard all year. Uh, a scholarship committee, uh, as I, I believe, did I mention about offering our local and general yeah. and international scholarships? An archive committee that they're custodians of our collection and uh, pursuing donations and scanning and determining <clears throat> and taking them off to store in the salt mine for preservation for the rest of the year when it when the the collection is not open for view uh -huh. i mentioned the long-range planning committee also another very active committee looking for ways to extend the value of membership to our members worldwide, whether or not they're able to come to the conference, looking for different ways to do that. And then we have people like Cassie Thomas, who steps up and designs our beautiful conference registration booklet as a volunteer. And as I already mentioned, last but not least, our dear Kestrel Montes, who is always on top of things on Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Big difference. And yep. none of them are getting paid. None of them, none of them, nope. So this is all that volunteering. <laughs> It's all volunteer. It's all volunteer. And uh, that I think is pretty special and pretty amazing for an organization. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I agree. I agree. And very rewarding, I should say. It's been, for me, just an incredible opportunity to, to give back. That's a lot of what... Uh, uh, a lot of what it's about for those of us who are putting a lot of time in it to give back to an organization that we've gotten so much from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this organization, you come into this organization and they're offering um, really, you know, exchange, their interests are excellence in penmanship and exchanging knowledge and preserving handwriting, um, promoting handwriting in the schools. Uh, and it's really a powerful combination of training and networking and encouragement and there are a lot of different ways to take part in it, and there's something for everyone in this organization. It's meant so much to me, uh, and I'm very thankful for that Iampeth family. It is a labor of love, as Heather is saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll feel that way. And like any yeah, and it shows, and it shows. 
I'm glad. I'm glad. And you know, we do our best and it's, we all have lives and we don't, it's not like we have a central office anywhere. And thank goodness now for the digital in ways that we communicate. We had our first. Keeping um, everybody connected. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's been amazing. And we had <laughs> first online board meeting when we had to decide about the Atlanta conference and no. uh, something different for all of us. So yeah. it will be remembered. Anyway, it will be remembered, I think. You're, the, you've spoken, yeah, this year, I mean, you yeah. sp you've spoken about some amazing news, right? More mm -hmm. presence mm -hmm. online, so more um, international audience can be part of your socializing and, mm -hmm. um, and get involved. So I think that will be a great thing. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, on the, the first time in 71 years we have had. <laughs> uh, well, okay. So um, tell us how, how it feels to be in the archive room with all those amazing exemplars in front of you. It, it can be overwhelming. Sure, I can describe it. It's... Uh -huh. I, I, you just walk in and it's so amazing to see that this document that this person you've heard about and studied and seen in print, it's right there in front of you. And um, yeah, I wish that was something that we could bring to more people. Just it's, it's breathtaking. Mm. That's how I, feel. Maybe I can believe you. Yeah. Comment, uh, yeah. Yeah. Which is your favorite calligrapher of the past? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, Hard to say, I am yeah. Relative of E.A. Lupfer, so I have to put him in that mix. He was okay. the cousin <laughs> of my grandma. <laughs> Not that that's done me any good, but. Um, and I have a soft place in my heart for E.L. Brown. He was uh, an engrosser and calligrapher in the state of Maine who did a lot of just almost quirky, interesting things, and I can always spot his work anywhere. So. I enjoy that. Uh, I'm not the biggest historian in the organization. I'm uh, a little more on the nuts and bolts ends of things here, but <laughs> those are my favorites. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for answering it. Sure. Okay. Uh, a, f a fun question. I mean, uh, I've always been wanting to come attend the, the convention mm -hmm. and I've never been able, um, but um, I want to know about your first conventions when you were in the same rooms with room with some of your calligraphy idols or heroes what what it what did it <laughs> feel like oh my god that's i don't know a, a lot more, more. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible i mean my first year um well it's kind of a funny story i arrived in phoenix like I said, I knew at that point I had taken a class with Bill Kemp and I had taken a class, uh, I, I had done a uh, trip to Ender's Island and mm -hmm. taken a week of classes with Harvest Crittenden. Harvest, yeah. Yes, who both of them have very much become mentors to me. And there were a few ladies on the bus, on the shuttle bus, when I got on at the airport and they kept saying, they asked me if I was coming to Iampa, I guess they could just tell. And <laughs> I, they said, is it your first time? And I said, yes. And they said, oh, you're an Iampa virgin. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to crawl under the seat. And every time the bus went around the airport and at every stop, they would announce to the new people who got on the bus, we have an Iampa virgin. <laughs> I was just <laughs> mortified. Well... Then we pulled, the last place we pulled up to, who was standing there, but one of the two people I knew, Harvest Crittenden, <laughs> and she got on the bus and said, hi, Jody," <laughs> And everybody just looked uh, and they, step they back, gave yeah. up on the Ampeth Virgin thing. <laughs> 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 it's a little bit amazing almost. I don't know, but, Best but way we, to start a conference. Well, we always have a way of, of um, the the new attendees usually have a different color name tag 
and they'll be asked to stand and we really do our best to welcome. It's a, it's a large group, but um, so back to Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's when I discovered it hardly matters what city the conference is in because you pretty much don't leave the hotel. Uh, and I took a class with Rosemary Buchek, <gasps> whose work I had just, or I can't even imagine how somebody does that. And Fine. yeah, yes, <laughs> and I took a class with Michael Sull, and I took a class with Harvest, and um. I can't even remember all the classes. I, I believe Vivian Mungle. And it was overwhelming. I mean, as I find every year by the end of the week, I can barely speak. <laughs> I'm so tired and just so overwhelmed with. And so, I, I mean, I come home and I just lock myself in my studio for a while <laughs> and uh, I process all that I've, all that I've learned there make it farther. And that's what I love about this conference. I call it a taste, as I said, a tasting menu or a tapas menu, where you just get a little taste of each thing and figure out what you want to pursue. And they'll always, sometimes I'll say, okay, well, that was enough of that, but now I know. And other times I'll just say, I need to do more of this. I mm -hmm. need to do more of this. So it's a little bit of a roadmap. Uh, but yes, it was in awe. And I believe that um, Michael Sull had also brought a uh, a collection somebody on here will remember the name of the collection that he had brought that had been displayed in um kansas city uh near his home of amazing originals of mm -hmm. things that we'd only seen in books before that had wow. just been unearthed and um so that was incredible and he'd also brought along a desk that had been <laughs> i believe in the at the zanarian college wow and we could all have the desk and have our pictures taken <laughs> Such a geek, I <laughs> okay, we've got another question. Healy collection. Yes, it was the Healy yeah, collection. The Healy collection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me share with you the next question because we've got only 13 minutes. So, mm. our next question What is the criteria for becoming a penman? What is the long process you are referring to? Huh. So, you can take you have to be a member for three years before you start the certificate program and then you can take one certificate of proficiency and the next year if you assuming you pass that you can go for a certificate certificate of excellence in that hand and you can also do a certificate of proficiency in another hand and it can go on like that and the rest of the program, the actual um, qualifications for Master Penman are not quite yet in place, but a lot of people have started on that path. So that's really um, as much as we have so far. And as I mentioned, we are offering certificates in Spencerian and Grocer Script, um, business, and business writing, and foundational. Yeah. So uh, that's plenty to do. And I'm yeah. sure by the We'll get through all of that. The rest of the qualifications will be. Yeah. Wow. If you think it's too long. Yeah. And there's you, a question. Yes, you so don't there. know how, how much it takes to, yeah, to get things done properly. Yeah. There's a question here. Does the membership need to be consecutive? And yes, at this point. Yeah. Three done. years. Yeah. Three consecutive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So, well. Uh, no more questions. No I think questions. we've. Yeah, I, I think we've covered all topics, right? I think so, too. I think so, okay. too. See so, else. Uh, you'll be an Iampeth president for two weeks more? Yep, a couple more weeks. Uh, I'll turn over the gavel on July 11th to Neil McCaffrey. Many of you know Neil from his inks, McCaffrey inks that he produces. Yeah. And he is already in high gear planning for our conference next summer, 2021 in Omaha, Nebraska. So uh -huh. calendars. Um, and I see a question here on how many penmen, yeah, how many are, penmen are there. Yeah. They, I believe I mentioned there, I think 16. 16. They're, not all, they're mm -hmm. not all living point. Uh, but thank you, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're not all living at this point, but about six or eight of them are still very active. Uh, with Iampeth, and you'll see them occasionally at conferences or on, on uh, Instagram and so forth. 
Yeah. Okay, so people, be sure to follow uh, the AM prof um, profile on Instagram. Become a member because mm -hmm. you can help keep calligraphy alive and all this uh, organization and great resources that you have made available to everybody. Uh, and it's a small contribution, but you get uh, so much in return. Yeah. You do. You do. You do. And uh, do check out our website, iampeth.com, for all those free things. And uh, um, so follow us at Iampeth Official. And is there another question here? Yeah. Era wanted to ask something. Um, she sent a question. Oops. Sorry. Um, and it was about, um, if I remember well, the calligraphy uh, guild. Ere, just um, remind me quickly about that one. Let me check. Because, oops. So. Oh, seeing all these names scroll by. <laughs> we miss them. I'm missing you all. Okay. Um, she wanted to know if there is a special program or a certificate taken to become a master penman, or is it by experience and your own portfolio of work? We've answered this question, I think, mm. right? It's a big program with very clear guidelines, and you can access that on our website whether or not you're okay. Those so, qualifications are uh -huh. available. Second yeah. question was about the process to create or set up a local calligraphy guide, uh, yeah. guild. Um, and I think that has much to do uh, with local requirements. I don't I, know. So, and you know, that is something we, that's on our list in the, the uh, Long Range Planning Committee to get more connected with local guilds. We're finding that younger people, when in our survey, we discovered that younger people are mm -hmm. not so involved in their local guilds. And that's a shame because there's so much, that's such a rich experience for many. Uh, so I think that we will possibly be looking at that in the future and hopefully being able to connect more and offer. We had some plans for the conference also to have a table about guilds and uh, Two years from now, we'll do that for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I applaud anyone who's working on starting a local guild. I believe Kristen Turney of the Cal the Calligraphy Podcast has been very involved in getting a guild going in her area. So she might hey, be a good. Kristen, person. let us know about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, tell us, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric. Uh, we hope uh, we provided good information. If not, feel free. Um, yeah, getting, yeah, Kristen is just telling that, uh, get in touch with her and you can exchange um, advice or uh, information or whatever. That's I, great. That great. We made a connection. <laughs> we made a connection. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Good. Jody, thank you so much for chatting with us tonight. It was great pleasure. Our honor. Uh, thank you so much for what you did, what you did this year as a president of Iampeth. Uh That's my personal uh, thank you to you as a member of Iampeth. Um And I do think I, I do hope people uh, join Iampeth because it's uh, an unbelievable uh, added value to your calligraphy journey. Well, thank you so much. And it's been an honor and a pleasure both to be president of this organization and to meet you and chat with you. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you you out there, take care. And we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, Jody.